Bonjour and bienvenue to Fight Day Focus as well as this iconic monument. I'm delighted to be joined by a man that towers over most human beings. It's the number four heavyweight in the world, Tom Aspinall. And we have the UFC's own mini monument in Mackenzie Pavisic. Come on, a little noise here, gang. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be talking about our two biggest fights tonight at UFC Paris. Let's get straight to it. It's with a heavyweight headliner with Cyril Gann versus Sergei Spivak. Tom, second time around for Cyril, fighting at home in Paris. Epic first time round, but he is coming off of a devastating defeat to John Jones. How affected do you think he is after it going so wrong when he faced the big man? Well, I think we're going to find out what Cyril's really all about tonight because he has never really faced too much adversity in his career before. Obviously, he had the loss to Ngannou a couple of fights ago, but coming back in your hometown as I've done it myself with the knee injury and then having to come back. There's a lot of pressure on you. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him tonight and we're going to find out where he's at mentally after you know a quick finish loss. I want to find out about where he's at physically in just a bit. But I was speaking with Cyril earlier today and he literally said it was this, like it was the tiniest mistake and it allowed John Jones to go through a sequence to get a big finish. Do you see it that way? No. Oh. No, it wasn't. I think that Cyril Gann, to be honest with you, I don't think Cyril Gann wanted to be there in that fight. I think that he wasn't even trying to get him off. It seemed like he was waiting for the fight to be over. I don't know what that comes down to. I don't know if it was maybe something that happened in the training camp. Maybe there was pressure outside of the cage that we don't know about. You know, we, we have no idea at this point. But to me, watching all Cyril's career beforehand, he just looked different in that fight mentally. And we're going to see how he's going to come back tonight. It's going to be really interesting. Mackenzie, you're lucky enough to kind of go between Europe and, and Vegas for those big fights as well. I mean, can you give us any insight on how Cyril was going into that John Jones fight? It was a short notice fight. I have to give him that. He didn't have all the time in the world to prepare for the greatest ever compared to what you've seen of him last time in Paris and perhaps this time. Well, I think the thing that we always talk about with Cyril is his attitude during fight weeks. It seems that pressure doesn't really get to him, but I think in March he was definitely feeling a little bit of the pressure. I sat down and interviewed most of everyone on the card, but John and Cyril almost back to back and the energy between the two of them was just something I've never really felt from Cyril. There was definitely an added layer of pressure, maybe nerves. I, I, I don't know exactly what it could have been. It just wasn't an optimal situation for him to be in. Tom, it doesn't get much easier, really, after John Jones when you're facing Sergei Spivak. Now, you have uh, encountered the polar bear firsthand, but if you can remove your cap for a second and just think about Cyril Gann and his skill set, like, how do you think he should approach this fight? Well, this fight predominantly comes down to octagon control. Who is going to control the space of the opponent? If Sergei Spivak walks him down like we've seen him do to a lot of his opponents recently, once Sergei Spivak gets his hands locked, behind any opponent. He'll just put you in that wash cycle where he takes you down, lets you back up, mat returns, multiple mat returns that Sergei Spivak does, which is pretty rare at heavyweight. If Cyril Gann can control the range and that octagon awareness off the back foot, even though he's a back foot fighter, he actually does control the, the octagon control that he has. He's really, really good. So I think tonight, whoever controls that range is going to win the fight. Mackenzie, I was very surprised to see Cyril Gann is the favourite for this one. The form guide on Sergei Spivak, very strong since he faced Tom here. He's gone on an absolute rampage and uh, he had a perfect outing against Derek Lewis where he literally, Matt, returned an A-star performance. Were you as surprised to see the betting lines on this? When I think about it, a little bit. But when you think of Cyril Gaon, it's a name more people recognize as opposed to Sergei Spivak. We are in Cyril's hometown. The last time that Cyril lost against Francis Ngannou, who came back and knocked out Tai Tuivasa here in an incredible fight. So I think there's some things that are being considered outside of the fight itself that goes into those odds. But if you look at them, they have the same number of fights in the UFC. Uh, the only difference really is that, you know, Cyril has fought for two belts and an interim belt. Okay. And 
and and Sergey, this is his second ever main event. Cyril's right. had like five or six in a row. So tonight, we'll see if it weighed on Sergey at all. Sergey doesn't give much away, Tom. Like, he's, you know you're not going to get involved in trash talk with him because he's not going to entertain it. This whole week, I've been trying to get something out of him and I just haven't been able to do it. Yeah, Sergey's not exactly bringing the bants. Let's be honest, John. He's not like you. He's not bringing all, all right, that, all that banter along with it. I appreciate that. I'll take that from you. No, talk. and I mean, that's what, when Mackenzie was just saying, like, he's not had the opportunities that other people have got. It's not because of his lack of talent. It's, I, don't, I hate to say it, but it's because of his lack of personality. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, he doesn't go out there and talk, and he, he's not giving great stuff on the mic. He's not bigging himself up. And the guy's really good. He, he's fought loads of really good guys. He's on a hot win streak. He's finishing everybody. And it's not because of lack of talent why he's not had the title shots. He's just, he's not as charismatic as other guys. Well, one man that does have plenty of charisma, he always wears a big smile, is of course France's own Cyril Gann. He caught up with our Heidi Andrew. Thank you very much. Well, Cyril, this is a happy place for you. Good memories here in this arena. I know that you told us this week that you didn't, you didn't let on last time, but you were a little nervous making that walk in front of the French fans. How is it going to be here this week, having been through that experience? Like I said last year, this is look, I felt this year, the last year and this year also, uh, this is look like a celebration. The really is really different when you are uh, in, a, in another country. This is my country. You have a lot of French fighters. I know all of them. And uh, the family going to be there, the friend going to be there. It's going to be like a celebration. So I cross my finger, everything's going to be okay this Saturday for all of us. You take on a guy in Sergei Spivak who is a little bit sneaky, um, you know, in, in terms of his ground game. I think it's no surprise that he's going to probably try to take you down. What have you done to prepare for his unique style? So we had in the camp uh, Cyril Marais, he's from the judo. Uh, he did the podium in the whole Open Games, in the World Cup also, a really nice guy. And uh, we did very well for that. How would you like to see this one end? Uh, I want to finish this fight. Like every, like, like every fight. Uh, I want to finish this fight, maybe in the third round. It would be great, like like the last years. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Maybe the stars will align once again here in Paris. Best of luck to you, Cyril Gunn. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Always enjoy hearing from Cyril Gunn. Now we've got a fight day focus first here. We asked the people at home, you good people, what you would like to ask Big Tom Aspinall. And I've got some questions. You ready oh for this, my, Tom? Should I be worried? I don't trust the people. I, I barely trust you, John, to be honest. I don't know what these other people think. You definitely saying. shouldn't trust me. Right, okay. First up, here we go. Uh, who do you want to win, Gan or Spivak? Real softballs here. That's, that's a very easy one. Um, Is it? I'm not really bothered, you know. I want to fight everybody. I know that's quite a boring answer. But we were just talking about so I know, you were giving Sergei I, I know, Spivak well, hell I've already, and now you're being non-committal. I've already fought Spivak. So obviously the obvious challenge would be Cyril Gann, but uh, it's heavyweight MMA. Who knows what on earth is going to happen tonight? We don't know. Um, but yeah, preferably Cyril Gann. Okay, preferably Cyril Gann. We like that. How long before you think you're ready for a title shot? I want one more and then I'm ready. I'm ready now. If you want to give it me right now, I'll take it. Maybe not right now because I just come back from a stag do. So. Oh, leave yeah. Where, where'd, yeah, you yeah. Go? where'd you go? It was a local one, but still, it okay. took, took the effects. Did, do you know what did I mean? Did some yeah. damage. Yeah, it did a bit of damage. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm ready to go now. Like, give me a training camp and I'm in. So you were saying, weren't too bothered, probably Cyril Gann, but broader, is he the next fight? Or would you like to go for that other one that you're talking about? Is there another name? Well, I want to fight Sergei Pavlovich. I you do fight. want to? Oh, of course I do. I want to fight John Jones. Ultimately, I want to fight John Jones. He is the guy who I'm after, ultimately, he's the end goal. Uh, he's I want to fight John Jones, but right now we have other business, but hopefully not, do you know what I mean? If I can skip the queue, go straight for John Jones, I'll do that, but we'll see how it pans out, I guess. Take our money, we'll take any of those fights, right? Yeah, and like it. is it John Jones or is it the heavyweight belt? Which one it's is? It's the heavyweight belt, but Even if, if, it's I can, not John Jones. if I can get the cherry on top and get John Jones as well, and listen, these people, when I beat John Jones, these people need to stop. I don't want to hear about, oh, John Jones is past it. John Jones is too old now. John Jones is the GOAT. Let him still be the GOAT when I finish him. And that's uh, that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to finish John Jones. Well, there's a line right there. There we go. I like it. Cut the promo. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> All right, well, we're now wrapping up our conversation on heavyweight bangers. Time now to consider the co-main event between Rose Namajunas and France's own Manon Fierro.
Rose Namajun is one of the greatest female fighters ever, Manon Fierro. I can't wait for this one. This is a heck of a fight. Did you expect, however, to hear the news that Rose Namajunas was going to jump up a weight class? At first, I thought it was a little strange, but then after we spoke to her, she opened up a lot about things that have happened this past year in her life. Uh, she went and moved her grandmother to the United States from Lithuania. She bought a new house. She built a gym. She is doing so much stuff outside of just fighting and training. So I think it's a good change for her. Of course, we'll see tonight what ends up happening, but she was in the in the middle between the two weights. So I, I don't think it's a case of, you know, she'll be too small. She seemed to put on weight naturally too. So we'll see. Tom, Rose shared with me that she had like a list of bucket list items that she wanted to do. Of course, she, she's captured a belt and she'd fought Zhang Wei Li a couple of times, you know. So she was looking for some fresh challenges to be a two weight champion is one of them. And that's what she's going after. Is that true of all of you fighters? Have you got these big lofty goals and are you just trying to get through ticking them off? I think she's getting a little bit greedy, to be honest with you. She's getting a little bit greedy. No, um, I mean, that's not an option for me personally no, that's a good because point, I, I am not making 205 <laughs> ever. So unless I get seriously ill or something like that or cut one leg off or something. But yeah, I mean, she like you say, she cleared out the division at the former weight and now she wants to go up. She's getting a little bit older as well. So I would imagine that it becomes a little bit more difficult maybe. I don't know. I don't want to say that in case it's not. But no, It's just, just the whole the um, on the body. Right? Yeah, it's, it's fresh for her. You know, she's, she's had a lot of fights at this point. She probably needs something fresh and a new mindset, something new to go at. And I'm looking forward to seeing her performance tonight. Yeah, 100%. Now, I'm going to have to read some of this, actually, Mackenzie, because uh, Rose said this isn't just a sport for her, it's an art. She gets emotional when people critique her art. Do you think of her in those terms, an, an artist in the octagon? I've spent a lot of time with Rose, both in Fight Week and out of Fight Week, and I would definitely say that that is so accurate. She's really self-aware when it comes to how she treats martial arts and her preparing for things. I mean, when she's not in camp, she spends most of her time tending to a garden, and I know yeah, it's not right. something like painting or, or a different art form, but she definitely takes the art very seriously. As well. she in play the piano beautifully. Yes, yeah, and so, you know, it's hard when, you, when you're a martial artist, Tom, I think you could maybe agree with this. You're very vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there in front of millions of people. And of course, there's going to be people that have something to say about the way that you choose to fight or the way that you choose to prepare or how you carry yourself, what you say on the mic and the octagon, all of those things. There's always going to be someone that has something to say. But I think for Rose, her performances speak for her more than anything else does. So tonight, I'm really excited to see her back. How do you feel about people critiquing your art? Unfortunately, this is something that I've realized with a lot of love comes a lot of hate as well when you get successful people are not going to like it and that's just the way it goes so you're never going to please everybody and sometimes you do get a little bit I know I get a little bit sensitive at times because you're in there and I think it's unlike any other sport really because you're vulnerable do you know that physically and mentally vulnerable like your ego is at stake every second you're, just you're in there in your underpants and a pair of yeah pretty much pants. pretty much like if you've got a bit of fat hanging over like I used to have you're <laughs> definitely feeling like someone's if someone mentions that, I'm going to feel a bit down in the dumps about it. <laughs> no, but yeah, you're right. Uh, she, she's absolutely right. Like you, You're definitely a bit more sensitive. Your, your emotions are heightened in there because you're bearing, it sounds a little bit corny, but you are bearing your soul in there to a degree. Like You're giving everything you've got, both mentally and physically, and sometimes that does wear on you emotionally. Manon, on a 10-fight win streak, I mean, super aggressive. Now, Manon's had to step back. She's gone down to position number three. But, of course, we've got a huge fight coming up with a rematch with Grasso and Valentina. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? But a massive opportunity for Manon Firo. Do you think she's ready for the bright lights? I think so. I know she's learning English, first of all, which I'm very excited about. Um, but she came into this fight week a little more aware of, you know, the way what she sells during this fight week helps not only obviously sell the fight, but it sells her to people as well. And I think she's really starting to embrace that, which is nice to see. I think it's a matter of who makes the stronger case. If Manon goes out and submits Rose or knocks her out in the first round, I think that makes a really, really strong case. Yeah. Very interesting. Lots of implications that are on the line. Yeah. But we'll see. Big fan of Rose Namajunas? Massive fan of Rose Namajunas, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in, when she's in there, it, everything she makes everything look so effortless. And as a martial artist and as a martial arts studier, that's what I'm trying to achieve. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, she's half the size of me, but I, I try and do it myself. She looks like she's gliding around the octagon. It's unbelievable yeah. to watch. Yeah. And it's not easy to do. She makes it look so easy. Tom Rose has a mantra that she chants before her fights. I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Do, do you have anything... <laughs> <laughs> to psych yourself up or calm yourself down before fights? Not to that degree. 
<laughs> what do you think, John? No, to be honest, what I do is I just try and keep everything as normal as I can. I don't try and make a fight day a big deal because at the end of the day, that is what I do every day. It might not be fighting in front of 20,000 people, but I do MMA every day, twice a day, every day, whether I've got a fight or not. So I just try and keep normal people around me. Don't be involved with too many people that I'm not familiar with. Just try and just have a laugh and keep it as casual and as relaxed as I possibly can. That's, that's my approach, but you've got to remember, everybody's different. Everyone yeah. looks at this sport differently. <laughs> so, well, let's hear from Rose, shall we? Let's see if she's still saying she's the best with Heidi Andrew. Thank you very much. Well, Rose, I've heard you say in interviews this week that it doesn't feel like a year and a half away. As you're here now, how does it feel? Man, I missed it. <laughs> I love this shit, man. It's good. It's good to be here. When you look at Manone, what impresses you about her and what are your expectations for this fight? Yeah, um, you know, she's a professional. She's a traditional martial artist. She keeps her distance really well, like manages distance, distance I should say, and range. Um, but yeah, I think I think those are kind of all the things, you know, the main things. Yeah. yeah. In terms of your size, I know that you you bought a house, you've got a second car garage, so now you got a bigger home gym. That's where you did a lot of your training for this. Did you feel like putting an emphasis on bulking up, on adding muscle and strength for this fight was important given the move up? Right. Yeah, I tried to do it as like as um, unforced as possible, right? Like I tried to make it like a uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely focused on just lifting as much as I could, eating as much as I could, um, but without, like, compromising the things that make me great, you know. Um, but, honestly, like, I do have a bigger frame for its straw weight, so it wasn't that difficult. Um, and I think even just with more time, it'll even get better. So, um, but I feel good. Like, the weight cut, um, it was still a cut, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like I just woke up on weight or anything. Like, it, uh, it didn't, like I didn't have to do anything, so... But I, but I enjoyed, you know, not having to starve myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rose, it is great to have you back. Best yeah. of luck to you. Guys, you. we'll send it back to you. Right, that's almost it from us here at Fight Day Focus. Tom, before you go, Caelan Lochran, a former teammate of yours, he is fighting right here in Paris. I've always thought that he was going to get here. He has some serious potential. Yes, the Don. The Don. The Don's a little tank. He's an absolute machine. And... Uh, He's pretty confident, to say the least. He's <laughs> yeah, pretty he's confident. Yeah, he's scoring a mess uh, this week. Yeah, we're going to see how he performs under pressure. The guy's really good, and I know his opponent's good as well. He's had a last-minute changeover as well, so yeah. that's going to be that's going to be interesting. But I'm sure he's going to put in a good performance and uh, show everyone what he's all about tonight. How are you going to watch the fights? So obviously, like geographically, you're going to be right there. But uh, are you going to be able to enjoy this one, or are you going to have like a business hat on? A little bit of both, you know. Um, I've never seen Cyril Grand up close fighting and that's massively different to watching people on the TV. So I'm really, really excited to see how he looks like in close quarters. I'm really, really interested. So I'll try and take it e easy on the beers so I don't, you know, I can pay good <laughs> attention to it. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. And your return dates. We were saying, you, we were breaking down who you wanted next, but like what month would you like to return? Well, I want to fight this year for sure. Okay. Um, I've been off for a year. I had a fight a few weeks ago for like 90 seconds. so. Yeah, I want to fight. Show off. I want to fight. Well, I don't I don't want to be in there getting punched, mate, if I don't I need to. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I want to fight this year if I can, if possible, if the opponents are ready and everything works out time-wise, hopefully this year. And Mackenzie, you're keeping it rolling. You're going out to UFC 293 to Sydney. Yes, I, I think we leave tomorrow. We're on the same flight. We are on the same flight. Well, send me a drink in economy. <laughs> I think I'm row 19K What's, or something like that. Is that like what that. it is? What would you like? What's your tipple? A mimosa would be great. A mimosa, yeah. 11 a.m. flight? Yeah. 20 hours of travel? I'll see you at customs. No problem. I'll send it your way. Thank you very much, Tom Aspinall, Mackenzie Pavisic. It is UFC Paris. It is going down. The first one was unbelievable. You don't want to miss it. Catch it on TNT Sports and on ESPN Plus. Local listings for the time is. Thank you for your company. Woo!